Today, we're back in Space Engine, and we have one goal to find alien life. We're gonna start in places where it's easy to find life, like a star cluster, but as we go on, we're gonna go to increasingly remote places of the universe until we're trying to find life outside of a galaxy just where there's nothing. Let's get right into that. So here is Earth. Um, so what Space Engine does is it tries to simulate where life could be. So we're using Space Engine's guessing, basically, to try to find life. An easy spot to find life, I mean, I guess Earth right here is number one. So this is, I guess, the easiest place to find life because we know that there's guaranteed life on here. So you can see how Space Engine simulates the surface of Earth. Once you get really close, the detail kind of drops. But from space, it looks really, really good. You can see how there's storms and different cloud formations like this almost looks like a hurricane. And yeah, look, Northern Lights up here. And it does simulate the ocean and different land masses and such. Like if we go down here, you can see it's going to simulate the ground. Like, look, we got grass here. But other than that, like it's not going to show cities and stuff. So there is Earth. So now we're going to find a star cluster in the Milky Way and look for life there. OK, so we're going to start by looking. So here is, oh, I just clicked on a cluster randomly. This is the Milky Way, and we're just looking for star clusters, really. So here's one, whoa, a lot of stars in here. So we're here in this star cluster, and what we're gonna do, we are going to start by just clicking around, and if we hit F2, this little menu will show up, and it's gonna show us what planets are in there. Any planet that has green text underneath is a planet that has life. Ooh, okay, this planet doesn't have life guaranteed, but check it, I'm not talking about this, I'm talking about its binary counterpart. This looks, almost earth-like check it out is that if this is water right here there definitely could be life but it could be almost like a dead planet yes that's what it looks like so it looks like there almost could have been life here and obviously because these canyons canyons almost always are made using water so it's like w water was here giant lakes were here cutting out these canyons and then for some reason the temperature climate changed and everything went extinct and it's now a dead planet Okay, so one of the moons of this gas giant has life right here. Okay, so this is the most boring kind of life, but it is still life. It is life underneath the ice on this planet. It is subglacial unicellular life. So very, very simple organisms like microscopic bacteria and amoebas and stuff are gonna live in the ice chunks on this planet here. Or I guess this moon, this is a moon. So this is actually really cool because this is how life could exist in our solar system besides Earth. On one of Jupiter or Saturn's moons, there could totally be microscopic life in the ice, which would be crazy to find out. And I think that's something that we might be able to find out in the next few years, maybe with the, their missions they're doing. I wonder how these um, these get formed. Like, is this from water? Because um, all of Space Engine, the generations are based off real things we've seen. So it's like, where did this come from? Okay, now I'm gonna just search for more Earth-like planets so we can find something a little more interesting. Okay, this planet here looks like it's the most Earth-like planet that's guaranteed to have life. And this one's not even in the cluster. It's a little out of the cluster. There's the cluster and here's the planet. Okay, okay, let's turn off. If we turn off clouds and the atmosphere, you can sort of see the structure and the landscape of this planet. So it looks like it's a young planet. And the way I'm thinking that is because all these little dots here are volcanoes. You can see that some land is here and then the rest of it is really just large volcanoes. And these volcanoes are gonna erupt lava and the lava cools down and it keeps going. That's how like Hawaii was formed. So you could see a little bit more developed area here from the volcanoes. And if you turn the atmosphere and clouds back on, this is what it would really look like to stand on this planet. And let's turn realistic lighting too. So this is the actual view you would see. So you almost have a purple pinkish sky and then you look up, it's kind of gross yellow. And there's your star. So we can look at some of the stats on the top left here, like this ESI right here is the clo how close it is to Earth. Number one is perfect. It means it's just like Earth. So 0.934 is very good. It's 93.4% like Earth. And then you can see this gravity area here. This shows 1.39 G. So on Earth, the gravity is 1 G. So it's a little bit more gravity than Earth. So you could actually probably live on this planet. Let's see, the sea's composition, H2O, which is water. And the temperature looks good, 17 Celsius. And it has a moon. Let's see what moon it has. Let's just got a little moon. Okay, so here's its moon. It's like almost an asteroid. Let's land on the moon and look back at the planet and see what that looks like. Oh, wow. Okay, the view of planets from moons is always really cool to see. That's what, it's very close to the, the, the planet, but it's so small that it's okay. That close. Okay, so that is like, in a star cluster. So now we're gonna go somewhere random in our galaxy. So here's the Milky Way. Okay, let's pick right here. So it looks like there's a decent amount of stars around us right here. You can see all those little dots. 
Oh, whoa. Whoa, we got a water planet. These are cool. I mean, oh, it's brown water. Never mind. Leave. Look at this planet. Okay, this is a gas giant, but look at like its edges. It almost has like pink edges. So that makes me think that a sunset would look really cool on this planet. Oh, and I was right. Check that out. I mean, you can't live on a gas giant, but the sunsets check it out man that is so cool oh here we go okay this planet pretty earth-like it almost it has a lot more land mass than that last one did and it's almost deserty on one side it's like got yeah look okay so this is like the complete desert side so it'd be very hard for life to survive over here because of there's the lack of water check it out this is one side of the planet and then the other side filled with this giant ocean. So this is where if human-like life were to develop, it would definitely be over here on one of these shorelines, probably. Um, this planet could be early in its life and that's why it doesn't have really any plant life yet. Oh yeah, look, organic unicellular marine life. So there is unicellular organisms living under the water, which that could definitely evolve into plankton. What's our atmosphere made of? Nitrogen, wait. The sea's composition is carbon dioxide. It's not even water. It'd be cool to see what kind of life would develop on a planet like this. It definitely has some cool landscape spots like these mountain ranges. Like check these out. Here's my plan now. We're gonna try to find a planet with life that doesn't have a star. It's a rogue planet that is not with a star. So how we're gonna do that, there's a little setting in here called ignore planimo and we're gonna uncheck that. So it's gonna come up with a bunch of planets, hopefully that are not next to a star. So we're gonna search now. Okay, here we go. So I made it so sort by star count. So these six planets here supposedly have life and don't have a star. So here is a moon that has life underneath its ice like that other one. But the thing is there is no star in this little system. This is a moon of a planet, and that planet is just free roaming in space, basically. So here's the planet. Let's turn up. Um, okay, this isn't what the planet really looks like because it almost it gives it a weird effect. But if we turn up ambient lighting, we'll be able to start to see the planet some more. Okay, so here is our rogue planet. It's not even a gas giant. Whoa. Okay, so this planet just exists out in the universe. Um, it probably was part of a system at one point, and then for some reason it left, and it brought with it these moons and this one here the largest of the three moons has life underneath these ice things so imagine if somehow the life could develop enough to become conscious and aware of the stars they would have no idea what the stars were because they didn't have their own star all they knew is that they were out there just standing here on this planet this is what you would see day and night all the time because you have no night you have no day or night but all you would see is this giant galaxy moving around the sky and you would have no idea what it was. We are now going to attempt to find life outside of a galaxy. So I think the only way this is ever going to be possible is to find a galaxy and then go to the outskirts of that galaxy. Because out here in between the galaxies, there's going to be nothing. We can try to search for literally anything. Zero systems found within 400 light years. I think I'm pretty sure that's the max. Oh, can it go 500? How, how, what is the max? Check that out. Look, search radius right here. I'm typing nine, 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 nine. Enter search. There are zero systems within that distance of me. So if someone ever got teleported out here, you would be so alone. There would be nothing. And if your eyes could adjust enough to the galaxy's light, you could see the structure and you could see all this light around you, but you would never be able to reach it your eyes probably wouldn't be able to see that. If a human got struck out here, you wanna know what you would see? More likely than not, this is what you would see. Absolutely nothing. And you'd be stuck out there. That would be very, very, very sad. So anyway, <laughs> we're gonna find life now. At the edge is we're going to find a galaxy. Here's a galaxy. And we're gonna go to the very edge of the galaxy just because this is the only conceivable way to ever find a planet. Oh my gosh, okay. Check this planet out that we found at the very edge of this galaxy. This is probably the most Earth-like planet from the whole video. The views you could get in your night sky too. Okay, let's take a look at the surface of this thing. Check it out, oh my gosh. Very, very Earth-like. Our Earth similarity index is 89.3. So that other one we had that was 90 something was a little higher, but this one visually looks like it. And look, if you go into these green areas, grass, it has grass and the diversity of the landscape too. You're gonna have more deserty areas like here, where, I mean, if you just woke up here, you'd think it was Tatooine or something. 
But Earth has that too. Earth has very deserty areas mixed with very, very, very tropical areas like this. Beautiful planet. Probably my favorite planet so far. And let's just take a look at what our night sky could look like. There it is. This is the view. I mean, it's not the Milky Way, but it is a view of the home galaxy here. You can't even see the planet. It's so dark over here. You can see as the sun does go down, as the sun goes down, this is what you're able to see in the night sky. And in Space Engine, because we're in Space Engine, we can just fly to that, which is so crazy. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have suggestions for things you want to see in this game, put them down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.